The CEE 100 CB spin coders are used to distribute a thin, uniform layer of photoresist over the substrate of silicon wafers. Photoresist is evenly dispersed over the substrate by spinning wafers at speeds up to 6,000 RPM. The units are capable of spinning within 5 RPM of the set speed, which can be accurately adjusted using the keypad. The range of the wafer sizes that can be spun on the CEE spin coders can be as small as half an inch and as large as 8 inches. The spinner chamber is where the samples are spun. The programs for the spin coders are set using the spinner controller. The CEE 100CB spin coders are also equipped with hot plates, which are used for curing photoresists. The hot plates are capable of reaching a maximum temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. Let's now introduce our lab users. Before using the CEE spin coder, you must first log in at the Axis Controller. To begin programming the system, you must first press the reset button and then press the program button. The display on the controller should read program mode slash program number. At this point, you should enter the program number you wish to edit. The display will then show your selected program number and velocity zero. The zero refers to the set point number. You should now enter the final RPM speed for the set point number and then press enter. The display will then show your selected program number and ramp zero. The zero refers to the ramp rate. Enter the desired ramp rate for the final spin speed and then press enter. The display will then show your selected program and time zero. Enter the spin time, which includes the ramp and final spin time, and then press enter. You can continue to program set points for multiple steps. Once the desired program has been set, press the run button. The display should then read program number. Enter the program number and then press enter. You should inspect the chuck on the equipment to see if it is appropriate for the sample you wish to spin. The correct chuck should be more than half the diameter of your sample, but not larger than it. If the chuck needs to be changed, use a screwdriver to unfasten the current chuck, hold off the spinner shaft, and attach the correct chuck by reversing these steps. With the correct spin chuck in place, you may now load your wafer. Finally, press start in the spin controller. The unit will slowly spin the wafer. If there is an inadequate amount of vacuum between the wafer and the chuck, the chuck will not spin. You should visually check the centering of the wafer during this time and manually adjust it if it is not accurately centered on the chuck. The display should read zero to retest slash start. If further centering is necessary, adjust the wafer and then press zero to retest the centering. Some of the clean room spinners feature a device to assist you in centering the wafer. Carefully lower the centering tool and drop the two rods down. Press your wafer up against these rods. At this position, the wafer is centered. Now, carefully raise the two rods and then the centering tool. Be careful when handling the centering tool. Quickly dropping or bumping the tool can cause your wafer to break. At this point, you should line the bowl of the spinner with hex wipes to absorb the splash photoresists. You should now dispense the photoresist onto the wafer using a disposable pipette. Only about 60 to 70 percent of the wafer needs to be covered with resist.
photoresist vapor is highly toxic and can be very dangerous to anyone who is exposed to it. Open photoresist bottles must remain under a fume hood at all times. Once the photoresist has been dispensed, you should lower the spinner lid. You must also lower the hinge panel for the fume hood. The spinner will not start unless you have done so. Once you have done this, you may press the start button. The spinner will then run through all the steps you have set in the program. Do not start the program if the spinner lid is still open. Photoresist will most likely be sprayed over the work area. In addition to photoresist having toxic vapors, it is also very carcinogenic. You do not want to get it on you. If you do happen to get it on you, an MRC staff member should be contacted immediately. Once the program has been completed, a message to remove the substrate will appear on the spin control. Lift the spinner lid and remove your wafer from the chuck. The display should then read, ready, press start. Once you are finished using the spinner, you should dispose of the text wipes into a ventilated trash receptacle. To use the hot plate attached to many CE spinners, a temperature controller positioned below the hot plate is used. The current hot plate temperature is displayed in red, while the set point temperature is displayed below it in green. To change the set point temperatures, you simply have to use the up and down arrow keys. With the desired temperature selected, you now only have to wait for the hot plate to cool or heat to this temperature. Once the appropriate temperature has been reached, you may place your substrate onto the surface of the hot plate. Alternatively, some of the spinners in the clean room feature a slightly more complicated hot plate controller. To change the set point on these controllers, you must first press the index button on the controller. The term SP1 will be displayed in green to indicate that you are defining set point 1. Use the up and down arrow keys to set the value of SP1, which is displayed in red. When you have selected the desired value, press the enter key. Now, press the index button again to leave the setup mode. The new set point will be shown below the current temperature, and the controller will adjust the hot plate to reach the set point. Do not touch the surface of the hot plate while it is in use. It is very hot and can cause serious burns. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how to properly program and operate the CEE 100CB spin coder and hot plate. If you have any questions, please contact an MRRC staff member. Do not ask Charlie.